Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So today we're doing another video in bonding and molecular structure. So, of course, you know what we do. Bam! Okay, today we're going to do boron trifluorides, molecular geometry, and again, so much more. The first thing that we have to do is get the name of boron trifluoride. That's right there. And from that name, we're going to get the uh, uh, formula for boron trifluoride. And that's right there. So that's BF3. Now we're going to get use our periodic table, get the valence electrons for boron and then for fluorine, and then this is what we got for boron. That's three valence electrons. There's only one boron. Then for fluorine, there are seven valence electrons. There's three of those. We're going to add these up and we're going to get 24 electrons total. Now we're going to divide this by two just like we did with the methane and we're going to get pairs of electrons. So that gives us 12 pairs of electrons. The least electronegative element goes in the middle and that's why the boron is in the middle because it's the least electronegative element. Then the other elements, that's the three fluorines, surround that boron and that X marks the spot pattern just like that. Now we're going to take those 12 pairs of electrons and spread them out according to the Lewis dot structure rules. And that first rule is to place a pair of electrons between the central element and the outside elements. That's what I've done right there. I still have more electrons, so I'm going to now place pairs of electrons on the outside elements. And that's done right there like that. Now, do I have any more electrons? Nope, I've used up my 12 pairs, so I can't do the next rule, which is to place electrons on the central element. So I don't have that as a possibility. So I'm done with placing electrons. Okay, you cannot use more, you cannot use less. You have to use those 12 pairs of electrons no matter what. Now I'm gonna check for the octet rule here for fluorine and fluorine must maintain an octet because it's in period two. It's one of four elements in period two that must have an octet and it does so for each of the fluorine. So we're totally good with that. Now I'm gonna check the octet rule for the boron and wait. Wait, wait, wait. Now, boron is one of only two elements that can be electron deficient. That is deficient in an octet. Is that okay or not? Absolutely. There's boron and beryllium. Those two elements can be electron deficient. Hydrogen, remember, is a duet that follows its own separate rule. So, knowing that, now we're going to tidy up this Lewis dot structure, get rid of the bonding pairs as, as dots, and we're going to draw them as lines. And that's what we got right here. We got the Lewis dot structure for boron trifluoride. That's right there. Hopefully you see that. Okay, now we're going to get everything else from this. That's the end more. Okay, so the axe-like structure, hopefully you remember the axe, the A for the axe is the central element, that's the boron. There's only one A for this here, and the X for this are the uh, bonding elements, those are the fluorines around that uh, boron. And so how many fluorines do you see? Three, so that means it's AX3 thus far. Are there any lone pairs on the central element of the boron? No, there are not, so therefore you cannot put any E's on this. So it's gonna be AX3. Okay, now how many bonding and non-bonding do you see? I see three bonding and zero non-bonding. So either from the AX3 or the three bonding and zero non-bonding, you should be able to get this shape. And that shape is, of course, trigonal planar. Okay, now trigonal planar has a certain uh, bond angle and that bond angle is 120. So if you see that Lewis dot structure, that's like a circle. All those atoms, the boron and the three fluorines are in the same plane because it's trigonal planar. And being such, a circle has 360 de degrees. You divide that by three because you have three fluorines and now you got bond angles of 120 for each of those. Okay, now I'm going to get the hybridization. So that's S, P1, P2, that's SP2 hybridized. Now, is this polar or nonpolar? Does it have polar bonds? Absolutely. That means the fluorine is more electronegative than the boron because fluorine is the most electronegative element. That's why it's not in the middle. Duh. Okay. And then is it symmetrical or asymmetrical? So this is symmetrical and therefore it is nonpolar. So I'm going to show you the molecule right here. Okay. You can see that this is the ball and stick model, if you will. And it is trigonal planar. That means all the atoms are in the same plane. Bond angles of 120, sp1, p2 hybridized. It is nonpolar. Okay. That is another super video here. And I got a great hat here. Don't be a turkey. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't be a turkey. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. You got to be liking that. All right. See you next time for more cool chemistry videos. Pass the word. Bye now.